So you guys, I hope that you listened to Megan's call. She was just on the Bombshell Dynasty call, I guess, two weeks ago. Megan is a six-star diamond coach. And I came to know Megan because she was leading a diamond training with Dara. And I was pushing for diamond. And at the end of the training, I just wasn't there. Um, and Megan said to me, she messaged me like a couple weeks later and was like, so why aren't you a diamond yet? And just like, just flat out like called me out. It was like, you know what? It's not that hard and you just need to do it. Like you say you want it, so just do it. And that was kind of, you know, I knew, I knew Megan and a little bit of that tough love that she talked about on the bombshell call, but like getting it straight from her was exactly what I needed at that time. And I just think that's a perfect reflection of kind of how Megan runs her team. You know, it blends perfectly with her bombshell call and how she so quickly has gotten to be a six star diamond coach. It is incredible. So I'm really excited about this call because I think we do tend to overcomplicate things. And that's definitely what I was doing with diamonds. And you know, Megan was like, just do it. You just need to do it. And it's not that hard, put a plan in place. So tonight I'm so excited to hear Megan's tips and uh, I will turn it over to Megan. That's kind of weird because I have no idea what she just told you about me. She totally could have bad mouthed me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. So the show must totally go on. So I'm going to start um, sharing a screen with you. Actually, Holly, when I – oh, wait. No, I can't hear you. So I'm just going to hope that it shares with you. If for some reason, like, text me on um, Messenger or something and be like, it's not coming through. Um, but I'm pretty sure technology and I just cl clearly don't get along. I was a nurse before I started all of this speech body stuff. So, okay. Still. Still good? Okay, great. Okay, guys, so first of all, I'm just going to talk to you tonight about your, um, how we overcomplicate things in this business. Because I will tell you, we do this on so many levels, it's not even funny. So I'm going to like skim the surface of it, and then we will, um, and I'm hoping that this will relieve some anxiety going into this last month of the year, which is kind of like really high stress with the holidays and all the hustle and bustle of everything else going on. And of course the new years and this, all that. So we're just going to talk about keeping your mindset relevant and right. Um, for what people who don't know me, I'm just going to give you a little brief overview. Um, I'm a six star diamond coach. I have seven lifetime diamonds. I am the founder of fit tribe. And I'm a single mom to a beautiful two-year-old little girl. I was a nurse for seven years um, in the medical ICU at the Tampa VA. But uh, I, after I had Daniela, I was uh, able to meet my nursing income after doing it for about a year, a year and a half. So I never actually ended up going back into nursing, but I kept my RN inactive. When I... Uh, I actually got into beach body because I was engaged. My ex fiance was a professional hockey player and he had finished his career with a um, pretty bad injury that was a concussion. And he had a pretty, ended up getting um, addicted to restrict prescription pain pills. And so we had been engaged, but when we got pregnant, wasn't just about me it was about we and I knew that I wasn't going to be able to continue a relationship with somebody who was not ready to get clean so um, it was I went from being an independent woman living in Tampa Florida having my own place having my own lifestyle to moving back to Pittsburgh Pennsylvania which is where I currently live with my parents at 30 years old which was like a hard prideful to like a hard uh, a hard like pride 
to swallow because it's like, who wants to move back in when they're 30? But I, I knew it was the best thing for Daniela. And so I started coaching to get back into, or I started getting to P90X3 to get back into shape and started coaching. And it was the best decision I ever could have made for my daughter and I in our future. So now I'm going to just give you a brief overview of my coaching timeline. And I'm hoping that this will give anybody who may be feeling they're in a slump hope um, and to just believe and trust the process. I started as coach officially um, really coaching in January 2014. I was an Emerald coach, kind of hung out, did some Emerald to Diamond training, and then I was motivated by an incentive from my upline who is Lindsay Matway to become a Diamond coach in May to help her reach, uh, I think it was a double, her double 15 star. Then after that, I realized how many amazing women I was surrounded by, not only just for coaching, but as people. And I decided to form a Beachbody Cup, Cup team. Um, one of those, actually, many of you probably have your Star Diamond up. Well, no, it wouldn't be your Star Diamond up line because actually your Star Diamond up line's Holly. But you guys are probably, you probably know Dara. And um, Dara was on my team at that point, and I was the captain. And we ended up going and working forth in the entire company. And it was just really an incredible year. But I was a diamond coach the entire year. My goal was to be a two-star diamond by the end of the year and to get invited to the new leadership conference. That did not happen. And I was really discouraged by it. Not going to lie. Because I got caught into the comparison trap. Um, Dara and I were put into a group with a lot of other diamonds that were about the same level as us. And some of those girls just really, their businesses went insanely blew up and it was really I started comparing myself and just like well, what am I doing wrong there has to be something I'm doing wrong and to be honest with you I, I wasn't doing anything wrong what I was doing wrong was I was comparing myself to where I was with them and I wasn't focusing on what I needed to do so 2015 came and pardon anybody that doesn't like I kind I swear here and there so if it comes out sorry but um, 2015 came and I was basically like, okay, this year is going to be my insert, you know, profanity. <laughs> but um, so March was, I became a two star, or our team, I should say, the tribe, we became a two star diamond. And in June, we went three star. And by July, we were a six star diamond. Super exciting growth. That was, I was a diamond in begin in February and within five months grew that fast and it was um and then in my second CBC I had my first diamond in August and then I got invited to leadership retreats so and now we're elite contender so looking back this is just showing you being a diamond coach and I'll tell you my income was not a great diamond coach's income. Diamonds can make great incomes. Mine was just like subpar. I was not a great retail seller. I'm just being honest. Um, and so I just am hoping that this can give you hope that staying consistent and trusting the process will take you where you need to go. So now into the meat of our phone call. Okay, sorry. Things we overcomplicate as coaches. Our focus, number one, Success Club, number two, Emerald Rank, our power hour, inviting and keeping shit simple. And we actually overcomplicate Diamond as well, but that's like a whole nother call. Okay, so you're probably like, okay, how do we keep this uncomplicated or how do we overcomplicate? I'm going to tell you, step number one is to redefine your purpose and refocus on your why. Mindset is everything in this business. You have to believe in yourself and your team for, for you to have success and for them to have success. You have to literally be the belief in yourself and breathe that belief into your team. Your why must be greater than your fear. New coaches, don't let this freak you out because... I feel like when you're a new coach, um, your why isn't really deep, but I feel like it will evolve in time with your coaching journey. Some people do have deeper whys than others when they start, but it will evolve with your journey. And I will tell you, your why has to be greater than your fear. It's not 
If it isn't, you need to circle back to what your why is. It's what pushes you forward no matter what, even during crazy months um, and crazy times or when you feel like things are just not going your way. I want you guys to really think, and when I'm talking about fear, like think about what scares you. It's, I feel like in our, our business, it's often fear of rejection, people saying no, and they're really not saying no to us, they're saying no to the product, or their fear um, of being judged. Oh gosh, she's been, or he's in a multi-level marketing business, or I can't believe she's trying to get me to do that beach body thing, that's so lame. No, like I want you to think and really put it in perspective. Are they paying your bills? Are they setting your kids up for a financial future? Are they paying off your debt? No. So does that really matter? You aren't doing this for them. You're doing this for your why. Now, start focusing on the future. Get excited for 2016. Have fun. Start building your vision board if you haven't already. And really, if, if you have a significant other, especially if you have a significant other that doesn't believe in this business, include them in this. Like, and even if they think you're crazy, let them think that. Um, it'll be fun to look down the road and be like, told you so. But, you know, just have fun setting broad goals. Life, family, career, education, travel, faith, financial. And dream big. Don't be scared to dream big. I always love, like, thinking about, like, when we were kids, nobody ever discouraged you from dreaming big. They always were encouraging it. And it's just crazy to me that as we got older, it's like you're discouraged to dream big. So, I don't know, it's just something to think about. This is what's going to keep you relevant. Now, what's going to keep your mind right? <laughs> stop comparing yourself to others and start controlling the destiny of your life. Don't compare yourself to others. Run your own race. Don't focus on failure. You have to forget the failure, or forget the failures, forget the haters, and you have to ditch self-doubt. Give your energy to your challengers and to your team. That's where your growth is going to come from. You most likely are going to have your challengers. A lot of challengers are going to evolve into coaches and your team. That's, that's who matters. And, you know, focus on your purpose and your vision, daily positive self-affirmations, and your why. And know you're destined for greatness. And just remember, you are relevant as a coach. You, somebody needs you. Don't compare yourself to somebody else's story. Now, this is where I was just actually on my smart session call with my, um, my team, and it was, a set, it was just about this. I was talking about the difference between the first year and second year in my business, I swear, was the difference of me setting smart goals and push goals and developing an action plan. Um, if you don't set smart goals and write them down and breathe belief into yourself and your team, and keep yourself accountable with a success partner or someone else, uh, you're doing yourself a disservice. Make it your goals measurable, set them up. You and remember, like with your team and others, whether that be your success partner or even somebody in your life, you have to lift people's vision to higher than your expectations because people are or to higher expectations in life, I should say, because they're only people are only going to reach your lowest expectation you set for them. And action plans are a must. Uh, otherwise, it's like you're flying by the seat of your pants to get to a goal. I tell my coaches, you need a roadmap because it's just not going to happen. Even if it's measurable, it's not just going to happen by chance. And that's why you have to be results oriented. You have to really have that plan put in place, tweak it as you go. You know, um, re the results oriented really comes from, it's like a Tony, um, Robbins type of thing. It means like what your result is, uh, you know the result you want, you make your action plan, and you break it down into your pieces, kind of like reverse engineering like Shailene Johnson does. But it's not just hoping things are going to happen by chance as you fly by the seat of your pants and scramble at the end of the month for success club, as an example. And last but not least, remember, incorporate the leadership ladder benchmarks into your goals. 
they are going to build you the long-term business stability and growth that you need. It's going to be the foundation of your house if you're building a house. Like, I want you to think of it that way. Write down your goals, read them out loud, you'll feel like a weirdo, and do it at least twice a day. Step four, take it back to basics and track what you are doing. Three vital behaviors. You guys are probably like, oh, come on, we've already heard this. I want you to do personal development with intention. I don't want you to go off of some, now, what your coaches tell you to do, like your first three books, yeah, follow that for sure. <laughs> but when you start developing as a coach, you're going to figure out, okay, this is my strength. There's my weakness. Like you and your coach will be able to identify those things. Do your PD with intention. Um, I get people there just like, what should I do next? I'm like, what do you mean? What should you do next? Like, what do you feel you need to develop? You have to keep you on the offense versus falling into a defense mode. Okay. And you are the most important asset in your business. So you must invest in yourself and do it with intention. Okay. Inviting. We'll get to that on a later slide. Daily workouts and drink Shakeology. Duh. But do a full program, guys. Share your journey and post the results. You've heard this probably a lot lately on calls because it's the end of the year. But it shows others that they can do this too. It inspires people. And, you know, a lot of people will be like, oh, when I first was a coach and I shared my transformation. And I'm like, hello, that was when you did your first program, fool out. Then, like, people seem to get comfortable as coaches and they start program hopping. And then they wonder why they can't, like, people don't want to jump on board or why then they're not sharing things anymore. And I'm just as guilty of this. So don't think I'm like, you know, <laughs> right by any means. But, you know, and it also shows your belief in our company and what we do and what we have, which is real solutions and what we preach. And be public on social media and not just social media, guys, but like in your lives, in your lives, just when you're talking to people about it and you're going out and about using your containers, things like that, just talking about it. It's part of your life. And you don't even have to talk about beach body, just your belief that nutrition, having support system and fitness are what get you results. And that will naturally take you into a conversation about what you do. Now there is a slide that I did not, <laughs> I did not create because this is actually information that we kind of, um, this is like a segue into this, but you know, so you really just have to block out the excess noise because we tend to overcomplicate things, especially with our business. Like it's like people are just stressed about like, what do I do? How do I find business builders? How do I do this or that? Guys, don't overcomplicate it. What you need to do to have a successful business is to, it's focusing on three things and they're not written here. So if you have a notebook or something, write it down. Success club, you hit success club every month, non-negotiable. Two, recruiting, you recruit coaches to join your team and join you on this journey. And three, success club base. That's teaching the coaches who you recruited how to hit success club. Essentially, it's duplication of what you are doing. If you do those three things, three things, throw out the, all, the, put on your blinders, throw out all like the flashy, shiny objects. That's all you have to do. And you will have a successful business that can build a full-time income, which I'll get into that right now more. Success club. It is something people way overcomplicate. They scare people from, they scare the bejesus out of people like right when they start that it's like, oh my gosh, I can't, like, they don't even think they can do it. It is not a what if, it is I will do this. You know, let your coaches choose their speed and commit, or you choose your own speed and commit. Three lives or five lives. And I really suggest to putting it in perspective for new coaches this way, I feel like this gives them hope and it's very tangible, not so scary. And it is like a proven um, fact from Beachbody or some, and by the way, I spelled perspective wrong. That like drives me crazy. I realized it last night. <laughs> three to five people per month, okay? Help three to five people per month over five years. It's going to produce a full-time income for you with Beachbody. So if you present that to somebody as a new coach, or even you right now, 
is that not going to like completely shift like, well, maybe I'll hit success club this month to yes, I will hit success club this month. I know five years seems long guys, but that's not long at all. So it's really, I think something people just really overcomplicate it and make it more difficult than it has to be. And also remember the power of one, helping one person per week and treat that person. Don't treat them as a number. They're a person. And it's focusing on the person, not the sale. Speak to your clients with love. And if you focus on finding out what their need is before even approaching them, thinking about challenge packs or I need to like get SC points, you're going to have success because once you find out their need, you're going to find out the solution that you have to offer. We have a lot to offer people, whether it's they want to get healthy, lose weight, uh, maybe they want to stop drinking or with stop smoking, or if they want to, maybe it's on the financial side. Maybe they want to leave their job. Maybe they want to be home with their kids. Then we have coaching. You have to find out. And even a lot of the people you can find out, oh, I can start them as a challenger and they probably become a potential coach, but you have to listen and you can't approach it looking for SC points. And just last but not least, what you know is no means no, not right now, which I'm sure you've heard time and time again, but we like to preach it from different mouths because sometimes we think that might help. Um, and also remember guys, challenge groups are like kind of your job interview. Be sure to use your search function to see who's not posting in your groups and connect with those people and let them know they matter, okay? Now, another thing we ever complicate is Emerald Rank. This, I'm real passionate about this one. Emerald is easy, that is the end of story. And actually Diamond is too, but that's a whole nother call, like I said. The perks of Emerald. You have, it shows you have skin in the game and it's a confidence boost. So that's your first thing you're going to hit. Uh, your first, it shows you're legit in this business. You have the recognition and it gives you credibility. You have the opportunity for leads. Now that gives you, not only are you going to help more people, but it's going to expand your network. And to be honest with you, I have about, I have three coaches on my team, two are active business builders who were leads of mine. Now, when I have people that are like, well, I just don't know if I want to like sign up my husband to be Emerald. I'm like, do you know that when I did that, that created <laughs> like that create you like, it's like not even, I can't, sometimes I can't like, um, even fathom why people don't want leads because it's expanding your network and you're helping more people and it can create so much opportunity more than just a lead and more than an upfront commission. It can, the relationships it brings is unbelievable. Residual income. It's your first step towards growth. It's your coach. You get no residual income. That's the bottom line. You get your product covered and you are officially committed to ending the trend. Um, this is a really cool graphic. If, um, Holly doesn't have it. I can send it to her, but I think she probably does. This is just a simple way of finding people, and I'm going to go into it in the next slide. So who, who are my first coaches going to be? This is where people get really overcomplicated with it. And I'm hoping that you can, if you are a number coach or above, this is going to help you with your team and teaching them. First place to go, go to your challenge group. Start with your challenge groups always. You can use the membership approach, um, talking to them. This is a, you know, do you want, would you like to sign up with, for a membership, or the discount membership? And if you sign up through people, you'll have your product covered every month. And usually those people will end up potentially evolving into coaches. Or um, if you have a coach, or I'm sorry, a coach, a challenger that is committed to a long-term weight loss goal. Like I have a coach, she's lost 40 pounds. We have 70 to go but she's committed to me. And I was like, okay. I mean, I, and I adore her. I was like, okay, I want you to have the discount. You're, I, I know. And, um, like that's somebody I put on. I, I say, do you want the discount? Because I know she's committed to this and I know she's crazy about Shakeology. So she's not going to be one of those coaches that flips in and out inactive, active. Actually, she's like buying the whole performance line now. So I'm just super happy to be able to bless her with the, you know, she has the blessing of having the discount while she's on this great journey. Now I want, you can also go to people you think will make great coaches, your dream team. But you should have 10 people always in mind. And when you get, if one of those people become a coach on your team, you replace them with another. Um, those people should be who you approach. Shakeology, Shakeology customers approaching 
oh my gosh, look at all these typos, <laughs> the 30 day mark you know, or their next order. Like I said, I am, I will tell you I'm on the fence about like this one just because I don't like to do it with just people that I think that I don't know if they're committed to it. But I do believe in signing up a family, a best friend, or a spouse, a parent, or accountability partner. And I mean by accountability partner, I mean get a best friend to join a challenge group with you. Um, that was what I did whenever I started. I just signed up my best friend. I was like, hey, like, do you want to do this challenge together? Heck yeah, like let's keep each other accountable. And um, so she was my first discount coach and my mom was my second coach. And that's where you use the placeholder strategy. You want to have a placeholder. Like I've had people literally think that I'm trying to like pull a fast one on them by having them sign up with their spouse. And I'm like, I don't benefit from that really for, in any way. I'm only trying to help you. And, but I can understand how people get scared when they first come into the business. But it's important to let them know that they're going to be a placeholder at the top of your, at their, of their business. And the top of your organization in the future for business or income purposes. Even if they are going to be a part-time coach, Emerald is imperative because of the lead program. And if you have a coach that says they want to be part-time, they should at least be hitting a C5 every month, or they're not, if they aren't, they're not getting the products into people's hands, and essentially they're a discount coach. Now, um, and if nobody told you that I'm not straightforward, now you know. <laughs> Now, as far as samples to sell, you are going to get that if you sign up somebody like your family or your spouse or a parent. They buy packets. Um, you can sell the packets for five bucks a piece. You will, if you buy a hundred and forty dollar challenge pack uh, with your spouse as the account, you will come out ahead twenty dollars by selling those for five bucks a piece. So, I, I just don't know how it's not a win. And then you don't have to continue the month shakeology. You can put them on to energize or something that's 50 PV or more. Now, eventually when building to diamond, and I'm just going to throw this in there for people that are maybe doing that at this time or are thinking about it, you're going to utilize your loyal shakeology customers and building no matter what I have. I've had people in my downline. Actually, it hasn't happened with my personal sponsor coaches because I just kind of was like, no, that's not how it goes. But in my coaches' downlines, they're like, I'm waiting for business builders. And I'm like, you will be waiting a long, or you're going to be waiting a long time for that. When it is normal to build your diamond with discount coaches. And, but, and just so you know, guys, that's why I was saying about the leadership ladder earlier that like really team leader is where you want to be focusing towards it's the new diamond you want to really focus on that stuff and the reality is is that some people get to diamond too and they get really complacent like they're like oh i'm a, di I'm a diamond coach like they expect the bucks to start rolling in and that's not how this works like i said to you i didn't have i mean i was doing okay obviously i didn't go back to work but i two star is what i say but Two stars where the magic happens with your income. So when you get to that point, you'll be mastering the, your three vital behaviors. You'll be working on uh, duplication of systems. And, you know, the best part about it is you don't have to worry about everything being elaborate and perfect to be that coach. Because I'll tell you, that's not relatable. Hence me giving you this um, poor, a poor aching <laughs> as my spelling. Like, perfect Coaches aren't relatable and it can be intimidating. So ask yourself, is what I'm doing hard to duplicate or is it going to scare people away? You need to let people know, hey, like if I can do this, so can you and I bet you can do it better. That's what's going to bring people to your team. That was totally off topic, by the way. <laughs> okay, now don't overcomplicate your power hour. I'm talking about, I have looked at some power hours and I'm like, oh my gosh, that like gave me like a little bit of anxiety. It's revise it, guys. Keep it simple, strip it down, and keep it powerful. Um, I like to do this power of threes. I like to use this little tracker that's shown right here. And just remember, consistency is key. I actually have redone mine and stripped it down to what is listed here. And 
you know, you just have to remember it's consistency is key. Building over the long haul, it's not going to happen overnight. So you can't ever stop, including in December. We're connecting every day. And the reason, and not just on social media, it can be in person. So don't like beat yourself up if you, you didn't add five new friends. Maybe you met somebody new at work. That could be one of your contacts. Um, and make sure you have a system in place for following up. It will, be, it will keep your life so much simpler and you will not feel like a hot mess when you're trying to figure out when you need to make a follow-up. And do not get discouraged by no's, like I said again. It, we all have what may seem like a bad day, but it's all a matter of perspective because there will be a lot of no's and if you don't have a lot of no's, the, that's a sign that you are not asking enough people. And um, if you guys have any questions about my power hour, I mean, I'll be more than happy to answer you. I have, like I said, I have stripped mine down. I felt mine was too overwhelming. It was overwhelming me. It was overwhelming my new coaches. This is for my new coaches, actually. And the um, create images is honestly like, that's like if you completed everything, when you complete everything else, if you have extra time, that's what you do. Like, it's not necessary to create challenge group images. There's other ways we can like work with that. Now, implementing your, your power hour. You need to make it focused, un and uninterrupted, real work. But like, you can make your power hour turn into three hours if you have kids running around, phones, social media, emails, and news feeds. Or you can have one hour of intense focus, even if it's broken up into chunks. Regardless, keep your power hour simple. Like I said, cut out the crap. You don't... You go on, you just go to YouTube to look at something, then you see like a training webinar, then you see somebody else's, maybe, I don't know, maybe I just get distracted. There's a lot of things out there to distract you on YouTube. Um, if you go on PicMonkey, you can get sucked into that hole for an, a, over, you know, creating over elaborate posts and perfectionism. If you're one of those people, then you're really screwed. Um, there's a lot of things that can wait for another time. So just remember that. And if you make this huge to-do list and you only finish half of it, you're gonna feel like you failed and you didn't. So keep it simple. Uh, don't question anything you do in the first 15 minutes. Just do what you have to do. Don't stop. And if you get, but then if you get stuck for like, they say about 30 seconds to a minute on something where you're having like a brain freeze and you're like, okay, maybe you're writing a post and you're like, I don't know what to say or just like trying to write a deep post or something. like. Okay, so move on, next. Now, have laser focus, have the one track mind. I say this because I have ADD, and <laughs> the average person has 49 thoughts per minute. So, like, you really have to go with a one track mind with no interruptions. Listen to music. Background music actually helps you finish tasks faster and keep your lights bright. Um, that increases your productivity by about 10%. And when you keep your work area clear and tidy, it's proven that if you have a clearer desk, you're gonna have a clearer mind and you are not gonna feel as overwhelmed. A calendar is a must, especially for your follow-ups. And it shouldn't be hidden. It should be somewhere where you can see it, where it's available and you can refer to it. And a power hour and tracker should be in use and go hand in hand. Darren and I had one um, and then I like tweaked it to make my own. And I actually, I like beach bodies to me is like, whoa, overwhelming. Their BAT like makes, that's another thing. Like, I'm like, whoa, that's like way too much for me. So this is what I use. And you know, it helps me with social media to tell, am I really, am I really adding my people? Am I doing my starters? Am I doing these daily deposits that I need to be doing? And you'll be able to tell, you know, if you're having a skewed perception of what you're doing and you can tell what you're slacking on in your power hour as well. All right. So inviting, keep it simple. Um, Daily deposits, don't spend more than five minutes on them. Give likes and comments that have value. Do not profile creep other coaches. Uh, it will not only cause you to become unfocused, but then you're gonna fall into the comparison trap, trap and become a coach stalker. <laughs> Keep messages and emails short and simple. 140 characters to 150 
Otherwise, you're probably getting away from the point you're trying to get across. And throw your what ifs out the window, because I'll tell you one thing. If you are sitting there wondering, well, I don't know, what if I should I send this or this? You're just wasting your time. If you never ask, the answer is always going to be no. That's just as simple as it can get. Now, for your ember, your invites and convos, com oh, gosh, I like can't talk. Hold on, I need like a drink of water. For your invites and conversation starters, just keep it simple. And I know you're like easier said than done. Really, guys, it's like, have you ever considered being a coach? Have you ever considered doing what I'm doing? Have you ever considered joining an online fitness, account, an account, fitness accountability group? I see you have the kids and you're a stay-at-home mom. I'd love for you to join my upcoming group or my busy mom boot camp. Hey, would you like to get some coffee soon, sometime soon to catch up? Oh, you know, I haven't talked to you since high school. Your kids are so beautiful. What are you up to? These are like, like really, that's simple. But we overanalyze this shit and we make it way overcomplicated. Um, and what works, even if it's a conversation starter, copy and paste it work off scripts, save yourself time. And if you do that, it makes your life easy. And if you work off scripts, doing copy and paste method, your invite should not take longer than five to 10 minutes, depending how many you do. Use voice messages. Um, that is my favorite feature on Facebook. <laughs> and actually on iMessage, it's like my BFF. Use them when available. And I'll always follow up on the phone if you can. Guys, you can accomplish in 15 minutes on a phone call what you can do through like two weeks of post, two weeks of Facebook messaging. And I actually start, started saying that on my coach applications to my cold leads. I'm like, just so you know, because <laughs> a lot of people like don't want to talk in person. And I'm like, just so you know, like this is the deal. We can make this a 15 minute phone call or we can make this a two week ordeal. Like I like straight up say that. And, and they end up texting me. I'm like, oh, but <laughs> it's worth a shot. So just make sure you set up your follow-up regardless whether you get them on the phone or not. People do say, oh, but what if I get voicemail? Um, I have a script for that. I can share that with Holly, and she can share that with you as well. And it's very genuine, and I've only used it once, <coughs> and the girl ended up in my challenge group because I, I don't think she felt bad. I think she just forgot that we had a call. But um, amateurs just send links. Your that like. If you're just sending over a video, hey, do you want to check, like join this challenge group? That's chasing a sale. You're going to get crickets. It's going to stress you out because then you're not going to know how to follow up. Keep it simple. Pros develop relationships. They position themselves for a follow through. If you haven't read GoPro, make sure you do or listen to it because you have to position yourself to succeed. You know, find out when you're going to follow up with them. Schedule that as like an appointment. Put that on your calendar. It will make your life so much simpler. Okay, don't overcomplicate day to day. This is kind of like my let shit go piece. If you feel overwhelmed, I want you to think about things. How are you doing your systems? What are you doing day to day? You have to set limits for your business and your personal life and your family and friends or your spouse or significant other or whatever. And I'll tell you, because I did not do this. Sometimes I even catch myself still not doing it, like today. But you have to keep yourself in check. How many times a day do you check your emails, Facebook messages, notifications, and challenge groups? That's my question for you, number one. So answer that to yourself. Do not check them more than twice a day. Check them in the morning and check them at night. Otherwise, you're a slave to your inbox. And that is a no-no. And also, if you are a beck and call to your challenge groups and you are answering every single question they ask or whatever every challenger says and liking everything on the second, would that, would, would you want to be a coach? Would that, they'd be like, oh my gosh, she sits on Facebook all day. She's on Facebook all day. I would never be able to do that. I have five kids. Set boundaries. You have, like, you deserve that. And also, business hours. Respect yourself and your time. I, um, Dara knows that this is a huge issue I had. I used to give everybody and anybody a mentor call that wanted to have one with me as a coach. And I would, 
I would give so much time and I would, then I'm like, I just flushed all that time down the drain because then they would go into the coach witness protection program. Match your coach's effort and work with the willing, you know, do the, if you walk, I walk, if you run, I run, if you sprint, I sprint. Everyone has their own process, respect it, don't push people. And don't, even if you're a newer coach, don't hesitate as you're building your team to set a qualifier for Metro Quads. It can be just turning in a tracker to you. I've recently found out that people on my team who've been on my team for a while have not been tracking. And it was like, it baffled me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you have not been tracking. But like, I've never required people to turn in the trackers. So maybe it's on me. So maybe that could be a qualifier for a call with you. Or just one SC point on the board that shows they're trying and they're trying to help one person. They're doing something with their business. Um, and when you do set those business hours, make sure when you unplug, just really be present and let go of perfectionism and people pleasing. People are going to ask you to do a lot of things, not only in your business, but in your personal time, say no and mean it. Favors, questions, whatever people have, challengers, friends, family, other coaches, whatever. Decipher if you can honestly handle what they're asking you to do and don't answer right away. Say, let me check my schedule and I'll get back to you on that and really think about if you can do it. I had it happen to me last month. I took on way too much. I took on speaking at Pittsburgh Market Com Council's um, at a diamond training event. The same weekend I took on the bombshell dynasty call and i thought that was a smart idea because <laughs> i thought they were going to let me speak on the same topics and they didn't so that completely backfired on me i should have thought about it first so that's an example but otherwise first things first eat that frog tackle your hardest problem first visualize how you're going to make your day picture your achievements because if you don't have a vision it's never going to become a reality and work out. It's your therapy, guys. It clears your mind. It relieves your stress. I know it's easy to just skip. I'm like number one offender. Focus daily on your purpose, why, goals, and self-affirmations. Write them down and have them around. And, you know, just make sure that you really are embrace coaching and what you do and just love it and enjoy it. When you make it overcomplicated, you're going to resent it or you're not going to like it and it's just going to become too much for you and then i just i'm going to finish with this quote i just love this because i thought it was so true the trouble with so many of us is that we underestimate the power of simplicity we have a tendency it seems to overcomplicate our lives and forget what's important and what's not we tend to mistake movement for achievement we tend to focus on activities instead of results and as the pace of life continues to race along in the outside world we forget that we have the power to control our lives regardless of what's going on outside. So that is all I have for you. Thank you, yeah, Maggie. I can't hear anybody. Can't hear so I'm totally open to answering questions, but <laughs> it's yeah, like if you guys have questions, anybody. you can um, um so if anybody has questions, I'm definitely down to answer them. Any questions? Looks like we're all good. Yes. Thank you so much, Megan. I know you can't hear me. <laughs> you guys, um, awesome. Want any of the resources that I spoke of in the call? Uh, I will be more than happy to pass this on to Holly, and she will share them with you. But um, other than that, thanks, Tara. Yes, you're so. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, have a great night, and thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Megan. Bye. <laughs>